Okay, the options for companies like more Matterport, more. you know, they're very geek. And uh, the yeah. SPAC route was one. But it's the way that we approached this was really not about Basically, looking at a transaction type, but who is the right partner. So when we entered the process, we were considering all options, where is uh, it, traditional um, public offering, where even going? staying private, so as well as the SPAC. With, um, and through that process, we met the Gores the Group. SEC and they were the a very interesting partner that had an unusual amount of experience in the SPAC space, as well as having deep technology investing experience as well. And as we dipped further into that process, we found that we had a terrific partner that could really create a force multiplier for us in bringing Matterport public and accelerating on our strategy of creating one of the most exciting platform technologies of the decade. RJ, explain this though, and then, and then so I'll talk to Mark about it. But is, sometimes uh, I've asked, I asked the question I just asked you, and, and I'll get feedback from people and say, the world, you know, if somebody was going uh, public, you typically wouldn't ask them why they decided to use Goldman Sachs as your underwriter. We'll come into a Do you think it's similar or no? A business combination that will result no, in listen, I think, you know, in, in, certainly in my experience, I've been doing this long enough. What's most important is quality, right? You look for quality in the partnerships, no matter who you choose, if you're really doing this in the right way. Like and that's something right that I think has been deeply rooted with Matterport, AK, our investors, on, our board members, first, really our partners and customers along the way. It's, 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 it's built around happen. that fabric. You know, and, you know, I can genuinely say that, that, you know, in this case, there's no question, the you know, the SPAC one. vehicle uh, presents some very efficient, advantageous options to it. And you can move very quickly through that listing process, through that fundraising process. You have a fantastic lineup of type investors that are on the ready. So and if you, you partner with the right company, and, and you really can the, create the, something that I think that is extraordinary, differentiated, so but basically really it's going that's to unique transaction for your over. company. I mean, it's not so necessarily right for every AK business, but you know, in our case, we were thoughtful about it, and we feel so the really combined great about will have an implied pro hey, forma hey, you've now done seven of these. Of and I think the value. public... Closing it, somewhat understands closing them, somewhat doesn't closing. understand so them. When we look back at this billion and of SPACs, and a lot of people uh, look at uh, the number of just the pure volume of them and say, look, the a couple of years from the now, we're going to look back, and there may be some successes, of 20, but, uh, you know, anything, anytime the there's too much energy around something, there is a bit of a mania, uh, so and there's, there's, there's going to be uh, losses along the way as well, if not more so. Right now, I think... Look, okay. we, we keep our heads down and stay and focused on finding, of, bringing great companies public, of, right? Um, so what we look for is pretty common yeah, across yeah, all of them. We look for um, high quality companies that are bringing mm -hmm. differentiated and market leading so solutions to the market, so very much a like Matterport. Have untapped market and significant meaning that growth potential in front of them. Twice as much management to deliver on that potential. Deal I think if we stick to that expects. recipe, we're going to so continue meaning that the success we've had price, over the course of the last six years. One of the questions people have asked is a lot about alignment, alignment of the various the investor cap. groups, so, and, and also disclosure rules related to IPOs versus SPACs. Mark, I wanted to get your sense on a couple of things. We've obviously been asking some of these questions in large part because last. Week, there was not this one, Clover, not this report, but a very high profile and, and spec and with Kamal Fali Hapatia. Uh, then you had a short about seller come out the that um, and said there were certain things that did not get disclosed about. And the they, you know, they were talking curious, about it, and they basically put are, do you a buy. So once that happened, around like forward-looking projections yeah, in the like context of a SPAC, this which can't right here, be done in IPO, should, like should those kinds of things be aligned? Off. The fiduciary duty rules that would heights. typically Sorry, uh, like be established yeah, in the context of there. an IPO, uh, which time, don't necessarily exist in a SPAC. So my understanding, Mark, and you can speak to this differently, is the the sponsor actually doesn't have a fiduciary duty to the de-SPAC'd. Once, uh, once it's come back group, to a little bit example, from today's high. There's no high, fairness opinions. I, I uh, I've never been that, a, that we, a fan I, of fairness we, we opinions to begin with uh, uh, because I also think they're theater. But um, to some degree, there's no, in, there's no independent will, will, will uh, outside go into, somebody saying, into okay, this actually of their is a fair deal, deal for everybody. And it's a very, uh, very it's strong an, company. It's an interesting so point. I will tell you, uh, we have as, closed as five business combinations, where, um, and I believe we're one of the only own, SPAC sponsors uh, out there whose boards require an independent um, third party uh, fairness um, opinion before approving any transaction. We've done it in every um, single deal, and we'll do it in every single deal going forward. Um, look, I, I don't think there's do, any we, better we way to show your belief and conviction and, and to um, gain um, alignment of interest than to put your money where your mouth is. Right? We've delivered 3.6 billion um, of new equity 
across the five so transactions that we've closed. Of that 3.6, we personally Airbnb, have committed to over 400 million of them. And that's not other people's um, money, it's not with fund this money, type of software that is money in, coming from the checkbooks so of see, the principles you know, associated the with your sponsor. So, and this is the, their basic digital platform that they expect the ATX growth over two years from 14 to 250K subscribers, a clear market in five years. So they're, they're positioned though, as a long-term position here as a hundred billion market cap. Imagine right now we're at a what? At a billion. So they're saying that they're gonna go a hundred more times more than they have now. So but meaning that their, their market cap could be that big, you know, we're just exaggerating here. They're just numbers that they put out as, you know, for, 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 for investors. But still at that, if we put it at 50, a 50 billion market cap and look at Zoom, uh, it's 117, 252, and 233. Those are the biggest ones. So let's put it at 50. It's not, it's still, uh, we still, there's a lot of up, uh, up, upward trend here. And I think that at the end of the day this is just my opinion what i think what i'm seeing here compared to all the specs that are out there that you really have to dig in and see if they're if, if they're just using prop ups you know companies or or entities or, or or um actors or people to prop up their stock to get people to buy this is a well well funded meaning a well-based company meaning there's a there's there's a deal going on and the deal is going to happen so um, it's, and then let's go back into, let's go a little bit, see if right here, a powerful subscription model drives rapid growth for mar margin expansion, meaning that the term revenue right now is at talking here into in millions. Uh, so they started at two, two uh, they're expecting at 21, 221, um, quarter. So uh, 86, 123 at the last quarter and starting at 2022 and then into 225. So they're seeing a good like 20, 20 to 100, 20 to 50% in, increment in revenue and margin, the same thing. They're seeing very positive five, 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 and three. So they're seeing their margin to increase to 73 and they're right now at 56%. Still, it's, it's, it's a good margin at 56. I mean, we would like to be more in, 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 uh, in like 60, but that would be into next year, but still it's, it's positive. So meaning that it's, there's gonna be a lot of upgrowth here. Um, Compared to other stocks out there that there are specs that have been, um, been running a lot, I just think that this one is very well based, well funded. I'm just gonna wait until it comes back. Like I said, this is for entertainment purposes. You should do you do your due diligence and look into it um, very strongly if you are gonna invest. And I am gonna invest in this one, me personally, a good amount. Um, I just need to I, I need to be on the 2018 range. Um, and then I'm gonna go into this um, GHC vibe position. So if you, yeah, if you do have any questions or um, have any uh, any other stocks that we want to talk about, go ahead and shoot at the bottom and we'll go into it. Um, please just please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.